Hey everyone, before we get into today's video, a special thanks to today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is a brilliant online community where you can learn almost anything on any subject you're interested in. Topics of courses range from creative writing and photography to leadership and much more. I enjoy a whole range of courses in my free time and I've recently loved the course Video for Instagram Tell an Engaging Story in Less Than a Minute by Helis Narvez, which is making me rethink how to improve my content and how to stay creative. If you want to help out the channel and love to learn, Skillshare is where you need to be. And best of all, it only costs around $10 a month with an annual subscription. Make sure to check it out as soon as you can because the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link below will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Eugenia Martinez became infamous in Spain from a very young age as a result of her size and weight. She was ridiculed by her neighbors and hidden away by her family. But when she was just six years old, she joined the royal court of Charles II of Spain. It was here that she was nicknamed La Monstrua or the monster. And sadly, she had to endure abuse almost her entire life. Eugenia Martinez Vallejo was born in 1674 in a remote settlement in Merindad de Montija, which is located in the north of Spain. Her father was Jose Martinez Vallejo and her mother was Antonia de la Bodega. The exact occupations of her parents are unknown, but it has been reported that they came from a humble background. It is known that Eugenia had siblings, but how many is also uncertain. Before her birth, it was reported that her mother's waters broke one Sunday morning while in church. Because of this, Antonia, her mother, had no time to get home and ended up giving birth in the church. Of course, this wasn't a very common occurrence, and thus, those present believed the circumstances of the birth to be a good omen for the baby girl's future. The Spanish writer Maria Jesús Jabato suggests that this could be the reason for her name, Eugenia. Well, this name in Spanish means la bien nacida, or the well-born. As a baby, Eugenia was described as being healthy, strong, and with a very good appetite. All of this indicated that she would grow up into an adult of good health, something which wasn't always a guarantee at the time. While in the 17th century, and especially in rural areas, because of the lack of doctors, infant mortality rates were very high. For example, in England at this time, 12% of all children born would die in their first year, and 36% of children died before the age of six. Eugenia was described as plump as a baby, yet her parents didn't think too much of it initially. Well, at the time medical and social standards favoured girls who were slightly more robust, as it was a sign of fertility, and in some cases wealth. Thus, her parents likely believed it probably wasn't something to fret about. However, as she got older, things got more worrying. Little Eugenia started to grow very fast in comparison to other infants. It was said that Eugenia looked like she was 12 years old, even before her first birthday. Although this was more than likely an exaggeration, when she was just one, she already weighed around 20 kilos, and as time passed, she kept growing at an alarming rate. Meanwhile, her siblings grew normally, like most other children, and because of this, her parents sought out a physician in order to help them with their daughter's weight problems. As a result, Eugenia was put on a strict diet, yet, even this wasn't enough to remedy the situation. As time went by, Eugenia grew larger, and because of this, she was repeatedly made fun of by her neighbours. Due to this treatment, her parents tried to hide her from the local residents by keeping her inside the house, so she wouldn't have to endure the harassment she constantly faced in the outside world. In spite of this, word of the giant girl quickly spread to nearby towns and villages, and so, strangers would frequently approach the house in an attempt to get a glimpse of her and mock her appearance. By the time she was six, it is said that she weighed around 65 kilos, 
and as a result of the constant bullying she endured, she spent most of her time confined to her room, where nobody could see her. However, this would soon change, as it wasn't long until she was invited to join Charles II's royal court in Madrid. One day, when she was just six years old, a messenger from the royal family knocked on the door asking if Eugenia could be taken before the Spanish king, Charles II, also known as the Bewitched. Her story had spread so far throughout the Spanish countryside that it even reached the ears of Charles II, who was very intrigued by this mysteriously large girl. Of course, her parents were at first uneasy by this, but they were in no position to refuse. It's unclear whether or not they knew the exact reasons for their visit to the capital. Perhaps they believed they would find a cure for their daughter, but sadly, this was not the case. In 1680, at just six years old, Eugenia was taken to the royal court with her parents. Once here, the royal tailor didn't take long to make Eugenia a dress, as was required to be presented before the king. It was said that Charles II was fascinated by her appearance, and quickly suggested to her parents that she be taken care of and become part of the royal court, which they promptly accepted. A chronicler of the period, called Juan Cabezas, published a pamphlet of her arrival at court saying that Los prodigios de la naturaleza que ha llegado a esta corte en una niña gigante llamada Eugenia Martínez, meaning, the wonders of nature have arrived to this court in the form of a giant girl named Eugenia Martínez. He then goes on to add that His Majesty Charles II, realizing that this was a miracle of nature, decided to see her and asked that she be brought to his royal palace in Madrid, where today she is admired by the royal household and all the nobility of these kingdoms. Although at first glance, it seems that the king was inviting Eugenia into the palace out of goodwill and generosity, there was another reason for this. Since medieval times, it had been a popular tradition in European courts to keep all sorts of entertaining characters around. Spain was no exception, and here, these were called gente de placer, which can be translated into English as people of pleasure. It is said that Charles II was very generous with Eugenia, and she was promptly included within this group. These entertainers of sorts consisted of a variety of characters, including jesters, dwarfs, people with deformities, and even the insane. The king and other members at court liked to keep these people around in order to have fun. The king especially enjoyed their company, albeit in order to ridicule them. Charles II did not delay in exhibiting Eugenia at parties which were held at the palace. Here, she was sought out by many ladies who wanted to be drawn or painted next to her in order to emphasize the beauty of their slender figures. Sadly, however, Eugenia and others like her at court received no payment for their services, despite working long hours. Also, they essentially lived at the mercy of their lords, who could throw them out penniless whenever they saw fit. Of course, some saw this as a grave misfortune, as they lived simply to be mocked as a human exhibit by the nobility. Yet for some, it may have been a stroke of luck. Well, the nobility spent a lot of money on la gente de placer. They made sure that they were well fed, kept warm during cold winter's nights, and even had a varied and interesting wardrobe, which is much more than can be said for most peasants of the day. Despite being provided for, the nobility treated them as objects, and did to them whatever they pleased for their own amusement. In fact, Charles's father, Philip IV of Spain, is recorded to have had around 110 court dwarves. But this wasn't all for his own amusement, because much of the nobility also kept dwarves, in order to reinforce the idea of perfection and the superiority of the ruling dynasty. What makes Eugenia stand out from the others at court was the fact that two renowned portraits of her were commissioned by the king. These were painted by the artist Juan Carreño de Miranda, who was appointed court painter to the queen in 1671. Today, 
Both portraits can be seen side by side at the Museo del Prado in Madrid. In the portraits, not only does Eugenia appear to be sad and uncomfortable, but she was presumably in quite a lot of pain, as her weight issues would have made it difficult to remain posing for such a long time. At court, she was exhibited as a curiosity, or a freak, because of her size, and these paintings are a testament to this, as they are named La Monstra Vestida and La Monstra Desnuda, meaning the monster clothed and the monster undressed. Of course, at court, they were quite mean about her appearance, and this can be seen in the way Juan Cabezas describes her. He states that, Eugenia was pale and not too unpleasant to look at, although her face was overly large. The head, face and neck, and other features of hers are the size of two men's heads. Her stomach is as huge as the fattest pregnant woman about to give birth. Her thighs are so thick and full of flesh that one becomes confused and astonished by her unsightly nature. Her legs are just a tad smaller than those of a man and full of rolls. Her feet are proportionate to her body. Well, they are like those of a man. However, she has trouble getting around due to the excessive size of her body. Of course, at the time, no one knew what afflicted the young Eugenia. But nowadays, it is speculated that she likely suffered from a genetic disorder called the prado willi syndrome. This is caused by a loss of function of specific genes on chromosome 15. Children with this syndrome are constantly hungry, which can lead to obesity and type 2 diabetes. Often, affected individuals have a narrow forehead, small hands and feet, short height, light skin and hair, and most are unable to have children. Many of these symptoms are very similar to the reports of Eugenia from the time, though we still can't be 100% certain this was the cause of her appearance. Tragically, Eugenia was frequently mocked when walking from place to place within the palace, as she tired easily and struggled to keep up with others. Also, it is believed that she had hormonal problems and was infertile even in later life, never having her period. Despite her poor health and the mockery she endured, overall, it is believed that she enjoyed living at the palace. Eugenia was a pleasant girl and actually became quite popular at court, even being appreciated by the royal family. Even as she entered her teenage years and adulthood, she is said to have remained well-liked. Eugenia Martinez Vallejo died in 1699, at the age of 24. She lived her whole life in the palace, following being taken in when she was six. The location of her remains and the exact cause of her death are unknown, though it was likely to do with the condition she suffered from. Hundreds of years later, in 1997, the city of Aviles in Spain commissioned a statue of Eugenia Martinez to be made in honour of the artist of her portrait, Carreño de Miranda. The statue depicts his most famous painting, La Monstra Vestida, which was made out of bronze by the Spanish sculptor Amado González Evia. The statue stands on the street, which is named after him, in the barrio Marinero de Sabugo. Thank you so much everyone for watching this video on Eugenia Martinez, I do hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comments below if you think it was a good decision for her to have moved to the Spanish court, or if you would have been better off staying at home with her family. If you have any suggestions, be sure to leave me an email, or you can send it to my Instagram, which can be found in the descriptions below. And make sure to like and subscribe, and be sure to have notifications turned on, so I get all my videos as soon as they're uploaded. Anyway, that's all from me, so I'll see all of you in the next Forgotten Life. Thanks!